Hey there guys, so today what I want to try doing is pairing this $8 CPU cooler that I got with a 16 core Ryzen processor. This is the ICE 400 SE that I ended up getting from AliExpress for about $8 before tax. So this cooler here does seem to have quite a wide support of different mounting systems, which is exactly what we need because we're going to be trying this with a Ryzen 9 7945H. Now the form factor is called mobile on desktop or MODT and interestingly enough with this mini's forum motherboard for some reason even though it's an AMD part they went with Intel 1700 mounting so luckily enough we are going to be able to have that with this specific cooler but it is interesting that if you went with something that for some reason only came with AMD mounting that would not work with it but of course let's get this thing out of the box we have taken a look at that minis forum board before so we should have at least a vague idea of what we're in for and i ended up picking this thing up on one of those aliexpress haul things where you can just buy 10 different very cheap items and you'll get them at a discounted rate because you're buying 10 different items at once i think in total i ended up spending like 60 dollars, and this was towards the more expensive items on that order so as you can see it's uh it's going to be something very very cheap but i'm very curious to see what kind of a uh, cooling system we have going on here all right so here is the heat sink and i didn't think it was going to be a great fan i didn't really pay too much attention to this thing at all in the slightest really but it does have four heat pipes although it does have some pretty decent spacing in between so it's not exactly going to be the most dense especially also since the fin stack itself isn't exactly all that big it definitely looks like an eight dollar cooler but it might just be enough to get the job done oh i I see how it works okay okay see I, I get what this is actually this is the mounting bracket interesting that there is no uh back panel so we're gonna have to figure that out somehow but if I had to guess on how this is working, and keep in mind, I haven't opened up any instructions yet. Uh, so you drop that in there, little plastic thing, you drop it in there, and you pretty much use this as almost like a push pin where you press down to essentially mount it. So you're essentially, it's very similar to the stock cooler mount for Intel. So I'm going to get the motherboard and everything ready so that we can just do this whole process. You know, compared to the previous heatsink, which is this right here, we're definitely dealing with a lot less surface area here but one of the advantages that this chip has is the fact that the default tdp is pretty low at least in comparison to the full desktop part and well with that being the case it should be easier to cool though that's still 16 zen 4 cores that need to be cooled and they're not exactly designed to clock at a low clock speed either you know in gaming scenarios this thing can easily go above 5 gigahertz but still we're looking at a tdp that is closer towards about a hundred watts part which uses noticeably more than that and of course my microphone had to die at this moment so i'm recording this afterwards but the entire process of installing the cooler itself really wasn't all that difficult it was more tedious and i'm not the biggest fan of the mounting system it does use the old amd retention method that is really just using two clips with a lot of pressure and i'm not the biggest fan of that specifically what i hate the most about this thing is also just how how annoying it is to get out the little push pins that essentially mount it in this is one of those mounting systems that once you install it once you better hope you don't need to take it apart because it's going to be very annoying and of course after installing the whole system and getting it booted up we can see the rgb lights on the fan itself i personally do think that the cooler looks pretty decent for an eight dollar cooler that's a very nice looking rgb fan it does seem to be one singular cable coming out of this thing so i really don't think you're gonna have any rgb control so if this doesn't fit your aesthetic <laughs> then you're pretty much out of luck there but i don't know if you're really caring about aesthetics when you're spending eight dollars on a cooler now if we hop on over onto the system i did run cinebench r23 on here and this was really the main test that i wanted to take a look at because this is the real stress test in this scenario see there's pretty much no game that you could ever play out there right now that will utilize fully 16 cores and 30 
to threads. That just doesn't exist. But one of the only tasks that really pushes a CPU like this, at least for general consumers, is rendering tasks like Cinebench. And while this is already as stress-inducing of a test as it can get, and I was blown away by the results that we got out of this thing, this little $8 cooler was doing such an impressive job with all 16 cores and 32 threads utilized that not only was the temperature great throughout 99% of the test, it only went above 90 temporarily and then just came back down. Now, by the end of the test, it was about 2% behind the result that I got with the original thermal right cooler that I had on there. That is a margin of error result where if I ran this test multiple times, chances are this might even come up ahead. Of course, none of this is surprising because of the TDP of the chip. As you can see on there, it's reaching about 105 watts at the most. And well, that means is that the performance is going to be great in all gaming. If we jump over here to Cat Frame X, we can take a look at some games that I took a look at. And I only took a look at a few of them because again, this is mostly a CPU test and there just isn't really any games that are going to stress a CPU all that much, at least to the point where all of these cores are going to be affected. In fact, the utilization across the board most of the time was pretty low. For example, here in Counter-Strike 2, if we take a look at the sensor data, you can see that the maximum CPU load that we reached during the benchmarking here was 18%. On a 16 core process, that really means we weren't using much of anything. And you will see that the maximum clock speed that we ended up reaching was 5.4 gigahertz with an average of 5.3. <laughs> These are really great results to see for a CPU like this, especially considering the fact that we're using such a cheap cooler. And it's kind of a shame that Mini's form ended up going with Intel's mounting options instead of just AMD's because I'm starting to think that a stock AMD cooler might just do a good enough job for this type of chip, which is interesting to see. But overall, the results that we got out of Counter-Strike were great, but the performance is not really anything that we care about as much as we care about the temperatures that we were seeing. And the CPU maximum temperature that we saw in here was 79 degrees, which is perfectly fine for a 16 core part on an $8 cooler. I'm surprised we weren't in the 80s. And if we move over to Rainbow Six Siege, we can take a look at that as well. And you can see that again, our CPU load not really hitting much of anything. The clock speeds are looking great. And as you can see, our CPU temperature this time around did get into the 80s, but it's the low 80s at most and the average was 80. I did also take a look at Returnal and that ended up with a CPU temperature maximum of 89 degrees. So this was a more intense benchmark for sure with an average of 79 though, not exactly a bad scenario here. Returnal was one of those titles that showed the worst performance and that's really just a loose term there because if you look at the amount of stuttering, we were smooth 99.8% of the time. So not exactly anything to complain about. I did also check out Spider-Man 2 and as you can see the maximum CPU temperature this time around was 92 degrees. So it definitely was getting up there on occasion, but almost always it was just these random spikes that would end up happening and things would come back down as you could see by the CPU temperature being at 80. And again, that's not affecting our clock speeds much at all. We're looking at about a hundred megahertz reduction there from our maximum down to our average. And even our minimum was just slightly below five gigahertz, effectively being at five gigahertz. So really great results all around, but these were, of course, short tests. So I decided to play a game for about an hour and a half to see what the temperature would realistically be like. And well, the game that I ended up running for that time was the new release of Oblivion Remastered. And uh, while this is a title that didn't exactly pair well with the RX 6600, of course, the thing that we're here to pay attention to is the CPU temperatures. And after playing the game for an hour and a half, the maximum CPU temperature that we ended up seeing was 94 degrees, which is pretty high. But with an average temperature of 82, this really means that throughout the entirety of the experience, there was no issues. And a hardware info 64 does also report that there was no thermal throttling at any point throughout the whole experience. So like I said, while the game itself didn't run all that well, 
it wasn't because of the CPU, it was the GPU being the limiting factor there. Now maybe if I had paired this CPU with a more powerful GPU, we might have seen a bigger load on the CPU and maybe then we'd run into issues. But I really doubt that considering the fact that even in a scenario where we had all 16 cores and 32 threads fully maxed out for 10 minutes straight, we didn't see any thermal throttling. We didn't see any issues in terms of the heat. So this $8 cooler can just do the job. Okay, so that was a pretty surprising result all around. I'm kind of blown away. For one, I'm not surprised at all by the gaming performance. As you saw across all the games that we tested, the CPU utilization was pretty much non-existent. This is going to be the case for 99% of games that you play out there. You know, even if you have an eight core processor in the vast majority of games that you're going to be playing, Playing, it's just not going to get utilized all that much. Now bump that up to 16 and you're going to see some ridiculously low utilization. But the, that one individual core is reaching some pretty high clock speeds, over 5 gigahertz. And this cooler was able to keep that CPU at that level. Really, the biggest surprise to me was the result that we got in Cinebench. Because see, Cinebench is a completely different scenario. That is all cores and all threads being fully utilized for at least 10 minutes. And this is almost always enough to saturate any cooler out there especially one this tiny it doesn't exactly have a lot of surface area where you can essentially eventually heat so this thing reaches its maximum temperature rather quickly and while it did end up going into the 90s and keep in mind that i do keep an ambient temperature of about 73 degrees fahrenheit this thing was almost always below 90 by the time that it finished the benchmark it ended up at below 90 degrees in terms of temperature and how much performance did we end up losing in comparison to the previous cooler well such a low amount that it's effectively just margin of error so what does this mean then well let's discuss why exactly we got the results that we got for one the tdp of this cpu is vastly different than whatever desktop counterpart it had this thing while running cinebench at a maximum utilization we ended up seeing a peak power use of just about a hundred watts going up to to about 105. This is drastically lower than what it is on the desktop equivalent of this, with the 7950X having a TDP of 170 watts. At 170, that's a significant amount of heat that needs to be dissipated by a small cooler like this. While at 100 watts, that's not exactly that far off from what desktop i5 and Ryzen 5 chips could end up using. For example, on the Ryzen side of things, the X very variants of the Ryzen 5, so think the 9600X, those have a noticeably higher TDP than what their non-X counterparts have. Because the 9600X has an extended TDP of 105 with a PPT of 88. So far closer to what we have going on here than what is going on on a regular desktop. So a cooler like this is actually able to do the job fairly well. I don't know how well it'll do it inside of a case since this is an open air test bench, but it doesn't really quite matter all that much. I can't imagine that it's going to make that drastic of a difference. So this was really just a fun little experiment that actually surprised me a lot more than I was really expecting. I did go into this expecting to see a pretty decent result out of it, considering the fact that the TDP of this board is pretty low. But I was not expecting to see this thing essentially completely perform perfectly with this thing on. Again, we're talking about a margin of error loss in performance, where I'm sure if I ran Cinebench 10 times on one configuration and 10 times in the other, the difference would be pretty much non-existent. So if you are interested in picking up this cooler, it is linked down below if you want to check it out. I will also link down below this board and, you know, a lot of the other things that I used. I hope you found this thing to be fun and interesting because I definitely found it to be very fun and very interesting to check this thing out. We are going to be taking a deeper look of the RX 6600 that we have going on here. This was not a test at all of the graphics card. I just happened to have it installed right here when I decided to test out this cooler. I kind of just had this thing sitting around for a while. I was waiting to use it on a system, but having this 16 core board here, I just really wanted to know if this could cool it. And well, the answer is yes. A resounding yes. Not even an, a yes with an asterisk. This is just a yes. In all of the numbers that I saw, it never once thermal throttled. It only got into the 90s for a brief second. And being a mobile part, it means it can handle temperatures all the way up to a 
105 Celsius. So we were far off from this thing ever running into any real issues. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to get this thing all apart now and get back into its case. I might end up actually just keeping the cooler on there just because there is one thing I do want to point out about this thing. Getting it out is a pain because of these push pin plugs that you put in yourself to mount it that aren't retained in any way and don't have an easy way of popping out. It's kind of a pain to get this thing out. I had to use a screwdriver to try to pop those things out and well eventually that did work but it wasn't exactly the most intuitive situation. So I definitely need to make a decision on what cooler I want to keep. But anyways I want to thank you guys for watching. Check out the merch store down below. Check out the links to everything down below. Be sure to subscribe. You can become a channel member for as low as a dollar a month and I really appreciate you guys that do that. It really helps out the channel a lot and well I'll catch you guys in the next one.